now we are proceeding with um, uh, what are the different types of evaluation tools that we can generally use in our classrooms uh, some of the examples i want to share with you a simple open book test sometimes without even teaching the topic you can ask the child to open one particular page and read the content and you can give the questions for it ask him to find out based on his comprehension and application let him write down the answers this can be done in um, many cases like pollution open book test can be done even in many experimental things some cases where um, at that day if the lab is not uh, available at that time we can go in for a simple open book test and experiment based questions once you have done the demonstration or you are making the child to do an experiment with the litmus paper identifying whether it's an acid or a base all these things or litmus solution you can give some questions for the child for the students in general ask them to write the question and the answer and then we can discuss or we can correct also that is also an immediate um, evaluation after our experimentation or uh, demonstration so that is also a good tool uh, with our experience we'll feel all these as best tools when we are doing the teaching and a crossword puzzle crossword puzzle you can ask the students to make a crossword puzzle by giving the clues uh, either uh, uh, they can make a crossword puzzles up and uh, down clues they will give simple five words only five uh, five letter words if they can use a new words or the glossaries can be checked by crossword puzzle and the next one is diagram based testing uh, see uh, we can ask the students uh, to take a page take uh, the diagram and based on the diagram we will frame questions and ask the student to find out in ncert we must have come across those who are using ncert will know this many diagrams will be there without proper labeling without proper labeling first we should give the labeling for those diagrams and then we should test the diagrams and uh, we can also ask questions based on the diagrams so that is again another important tool as far as science is concerned and diagram practice a lot of diagram practice is needed nowadays children doesn't know to draw and especially i feel after this two years of online class they have forgotten the skills of drawing so a lot of diagram practice is needed uh, and uh, diagram is one part of um, science and case study questions again training them with a lot of case study questions see sometimes we will feel we are not able to get a proper case study and all if you are going for a class 7 and you can you are able to take something from class 8 reader and share with them as a case study ask them to find out the answer for one particular part that's also fine even if you are not searching through the google and getting a case study material you can even take class 8 or class 9 one paragraph or two paragraphs give them dictated and frame questions and give ask them to find out the answers so it's only uh, their understanding first they should have a proper knowledge and then the comprehension and then the application all this will come one after the other and then assertion and reasoning a very very important topic that has to be trained uh, for this a very important tool this helps us to understand whether the child has knowledge whether he has understood it or comprehension is there whether he is able to then all the four levels of the bloom's taxonomy can be tested in this i feel so and mcqs also making a nice mcq uh, making the child to take the mcq with the mcq only mainly topics can be covered so then and there uh, test uh, the uh, progress of your uh, students by using all these evaluation tools like if one class you are using open book test means the uh, maybe after two classes when you are having a oral test quiz slip test another two classes you can go for an experiment based questions five questions enough but but the uh, but uh, our um, intention will be served at that uh, particular period we can get the work done at the end of this period we will know uh, how much we were able to reach and uh, what is the feedback everything we can understand what we should do how uh, how we should reflect on this learning all this is possible provided uh, we are doing some assessment at the end of this period one minute teachers
so so based on all these tools we can uh, evaluate our progress as well as the progress of the child so every class have some ways of uh, testing the child yes the next one open book test i have given you an example on burning a non metal a reacts with oxygen to produce gas b and b is dissolved in water you may use a textbook to answer following questions okay so on burning a non metal a reacts with oxygen to produce gas b and b is dissolved in water now what is the name of the non metal right so any guess sulfur all right uh, metals and non metals i thought i'll use this as an interaction so sulfur reacts with oxygen to produce a gas what is the name of the gas that is produced sulfur dioxide and uh, when this sulfur dioxide dissolves in water it forms sulfurous acid right and when we are testing it with a red or blue litmus paper red litmus paper no color change but blue litmus paper turns red that's so that uh, that says it is acidic so all this can be tested with the one part that's all so like this we can try many open book test also am i clear teachers shall i go with the next one paragraph yes bhuneshwari ma'am yes one paragraph you choose whichever is very important and that you can give either this can be done uh, after the lesson also it can be done followed uh, by the lesson or it can be done even before the lesson some uh, uh, for example pollution is a general topic for that you can give like this and wherever you are coming across living organisms biodiversity in all those cases also this method is very much applicable and then a crossword puzzle a uh, crossword puzzle we can frame the crossword puzzle like this we can see through glass because it is a dash object so number 1 it is a cross transparent so very simple only we see our image on the surface of the pond because water dash light number 2 again uh, number 2 is again uh, across reflex so simple simple things can be done don't need to uh, like uh, bring in very tough questions first let them get used for this crossword puzzle a very important part of an evaluation tool this is a um, and slowly train them to make their own crossword puzzles ask them to make one crossword puzzle and ask them to come and put it on the board uh, and then or uh, put it on the notice board let them uh, write down a crossword puzzle and let them uh, display it on the notice board let them have the answers and uh, many children will be trying to do it and finally the person who had made the crossword puzzle can share the answers with others like that everybody's chance one one day give give the child that sufficient time to make the crossword puzzle this also is a, another type of um, uh, application more of application and evaluation synthesis all those elements of taxonomy will be uh, there is my uh, is my uh, screen seen teachers yes yes, yes. so yes so this is a diagram based te testing the next one is diagram based testing is very much uh, relevant for a heart flow not only heart any other lesson also we can go for diagram based testing a lot of diagram based testing is possible give them a diagram ask as many questions as possible one small diagram that's all we can ask many kind of questions from it based on their interpretation they have to write understanding comprehension knowledge everything even you can ask the child to draw a similar diagram and synthesis that is the highest level where you can ask him to make a similar diagram if you are making an artificial heart how many chambers you will allow it to have why let it be a open ended question let him say five chambers also let him but he should justify the answer let him say it can be only three chamber fine enough it let the whole body take a mixed blood like amphibian then also it's fine let it let it be its own application let it be an open ended question don't uh, stick on to this answer only but he should be able to justify the answer that is very important so here uh, we i have given the pathway of blood and whether it's oxygenated or deoxygenated that's all so if it is going to be right auricle first or right atrium 
then it will be deoxygenated the next comes right ventricle again deoxygenated next comes pulmonary artery which carries it to the lungs again deoxygenated but lungs it gets oxygenated from lungs onwards it becomes oxygenated blood and from lungs it comes by pulmonary vein again it's oxygenated pulmonary vein to left atrium sixth one again it is oxygenated from left atrium to left ventricle oxygenated from left ventricle to aorta which is again oxygenated and carries the blood to all parts of the body right so all these things again and again we are going to uh, tell it gets imprinted in the minds of the children so i feel a diagrammatic testing is very very important so all these are some of the tools that i have shared with you to know uh, to assess the children to assess the children during the course of taking classes only we can give all these tests it's not need it's uh, it can be even incorporated in a question paper but let us not wait for the final summative paper pen test instead then and there we can give them a lot of tests a quiz a slip test and then um, uh, even sometimes um, uh, together make them as a group and ask them uh, to debate over the topics all this will help us uh, to assess children right the next one is metals versus non metals the materials metals and non metals so when i am uh, trying with the concept mapping uh, i understood for metals they do not learn anything about metals in class 7 but they are learning about chemical changes in chemical changes they are learning about burning of magnesium ribbon a very interesting example they have learned but in class 6 in sorting substances uh, teachers please stop me if you are not able to follow or not able to see shall i continue teachers yes ma'am yes is it clear shall i continue yes right so uh, in uh, class if they are uh, if you are going to take it uh, for class 6 uh, in class 6 they'll be learning in uh, sorting substances they'll be learning about shiny substances some substances are very shiny and even the word lustrous will be new for them right uh, lustrous is new but in class 6 only we can tell them it's it means lustrous right so in that case with the word lustrous we can proceed further metals are lustrous substances when they are exposed to atmosphere or air they use their luster that is that in class 6 they will be learning about a hard substance miscible liquids immiscible liquids and then hard and soft substance and then uh, transparent translucent all these things they are learning so that is there either you can pick up from that shiny substance or lustrous substance they are called as the metals or you can take up from class 7 chemical changes we have learned from uh, chemical changes like burning of magnesium ribbon it burns with a very bright color it even damages some it will feel uh, very difficult to look at it uh, with our uh, eyes generally you know for some time you will feel your eyes uh, getting glared when you are seeing the burning uh, magnesium ribbon uh, when we say about magnesium ribbon immediately if your children have uh, this habit of watching the movies journey to the center of the earth there in one movie called journey to the center of the earth the hero will be using a magnesium to burn right and if you are able to quote that instance they really enjoy it i felt so you know many times i have felt that any movie you related to this no immediately they are very happy and so with the chemical changes you can say and the chemical changes we learned about magnesium when it burns with oxygen it produces magnesium oxide and mag when magnesium oxide dissolves in water forms magnesium hydroxide now we will conclude that magnesium is a metal right now what are the other things we are going to talk uh, take uh, further in this lesson we are going to compare the physical properties physical properties what is physical property some examples of physical properties and then we'll go with the chemical properties and then we will speak about the metals uses of metals and non metals and finally what are metalloids right and uh, there is also one small mention in the box about uh, what are atoms 
what are atoms what it is made up of how many atoms together make up an uh, uh, no atoms together make up a molecule and what is an element what is a compound all this can also be explained there is a lot of scope in this lesson to explain about what is an element what is a compound what are atoms what are molecules right and even further one more step you can even explain about uh, proton electrons and neutrons just like that one word you need not explain the bohr's atomic theory instead you can tell about the protons electrons an atom is made up of proton electrons and neutrons positively charged particles all this is only uh, the theories of different scientists all these things we can put in a word so that will help him to have an overall idea and we can also speak about there's something called as a periodic table and very very important because in class 6 for our syllabus especially in dav we will introduce the first 10 elements first 20 elements and their symbols many of you those who are adhering to our course of study must be knowing first 10 elements in the periodic table first 20 elements in the periodic table so let the child know what is periodic table all the elements that have been found are just put into one table mendeleev's periodic table what who is mendeleev ask him to find out as a project all this will add on more uh, he will be adding up his knowledge on on the subject called chemistry i feel so right and then about metalloids with that we will conclude shall i move on teachers so this is what i feel is the concept mapping now based on uh, physical properties based on physical properties metals versus non metals usually cations forms cations forms anions this is useful because when we are speaking about the chemical effects of electric current where we are going to teach them about uh, electroplating this anions and cations if you are able to teach the child it's fine otherwise you can leave If they are not able to understand, you can leave it. You can start from this luster. Luster means a shiny surface, whereas in this case it is non-luster. Here they are good conductors of heat and electricity. They are here they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Malleable. What is malleability? What is ductility? It can be spread into long sheets, whereas ductility can be drawn into wires. and are uh, uh, similarly melting points and here high melting point here low melting point they are very hard generally and here they are soft all this comparisons usually they are solids at room temperature they are often liquids or gases at room temperature they are sonorous sonorous means that which can produce the sound and here they cannot produce the sound when we are speaking about the physical properties we should always underline the exceptions there are always a lot of exceptions here is generally i usually use the word generally metals are conductors generally non metals are non conductors or insulators of electricity but graphite is a non metal and it conducts electricity generally metals are hard except potassium or sodium which is a soft metal so everything goes with the word generally so that the child will also understand there is no hard and fast rule there are certain exceptions here generally metals are not metals are shiny non metals are dull except iron which is shiny all these things will help them to understand it in a broader way they won't stick on to the same formula there is nothing like hard and fast rule there are also exceptions that has to be brought is yes? shall i continue teachers yes, so this is about yes, uh, this is about the physical properties between metals and non metals now the next one chemical properties so chemical properties reaction with oxygen four important things that's given in our textbook reaction with oxygen reaction with water reaction with acid reaction with bases these are the four important things that are given right and based on that we are going to learn for metals as well as for non metals now these four things alone we are going to explain for the children the, because uh, 
uh, if you are going to take it, this will be the nice fundamental thing for class 10 chemistry, right? So whatever is possible, we will teach the child. Now, reaction of metals with oxygen, very important. And when a metal reacts with an oxygen, it forms this metal oxide. And this metal oxide is basic in nature. An example is magnesium combines with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. And it is basic in nature. How we know that it is basic in nature? The magnesium oxide, when it dissolves in water, it forms magnesium hydroxide and it is basic in nature. How can we know that it is basic in nature? Red litmus. It turns red litmus blue. Right? And uh, this is very, very important. Children should not get confused about the color change. For a base, red litmus turns blue. For an acid, blue litmus turns red. The other one remains the same. That has to be insisted on. The litmus paper color change is very, very important because from class 7 they are learning. So, I love them to remember it. Even before starting the lesson also, you can tell them, I'll be asking you questions on litmus paper tomorrow. So, prepare and come. Something like that. This will help him to learn and come the next day. Otherwise, sometimes they'll be uh, blabbering. Just they'll get confused. Always there's a scope for confusion here. Red litmus, blue litmus. And some, some children even do inky pinky ponky. Right? So, let us not give a chance for it. Let them learn and come and let them uh, do it properly. So, I feel so. When a metal reacts with oxygen, it forms metal oxide. When it dissolves in water, it forms metal hydroxide. And that can be tested by using the red litmus paper, which turns blue. Whereas blue litmus shows no color change. Right. The next one is, uh, this is the uh, experiment. I'll show you one video also for this. I'll share with you. When magnesium is in the form of a ribbon, right? And when it reacts, when it is burnt, when now uh, you have to nicely wipe off the surface of magnesium uh, because there are chances for the magnesium to react with the oxygen. So you should wipe off the surface by using some paper and then you should burn it. When it burns, it burns with a bright white flame. Bright white flame is important. And then it forms a white ash. Again, white ash, insist on bright white flame, white ash. White ash is a characteristic uh, thing of burning of magnesium ribbon. So, and then you are going to take this white ash and then you are going to add on water to it and then you get magnesium hydroxide uh, and then test with the red litmus paper. I'll show you this video. Before uh, I, I end, I go for the video. Address. Right. Now, so this is some um, oxides of metals. From this, the conclusion is oxides of metals are basic in nature. When they are dissolved in water, the metal ions react with water and form hydroxide, which makes the solution basic. So this is the conclusion. So after completing this part, ask the child to write it as an activity. Ask the child to write what is the aim? What is the aim of the reaction? What are the apparatus used or the materials used? What is the procedure for this? And then what is the observation? What is the inference? A very, very important thing. Simultaneously, you will help the child to write it as an experiment. So ask the child to write it, right? And this will help the child to understand it better. I, I thought I'll try to show you this. One minute. Okay, I'll show that. Now, when we are speaking about um, metals, immediately reaction with oxygen, immediately a common thing is copper. Copper reacts with the moist air and the oxygen and it forms a green color coating, which is nothing but copper hydroxide and copper carbonate, which need to be insisted on. A very often tested thing. And similarly, class um, 8, we will be introducing them what is balancing. The first equation which needs a balancing is this equation in that lesson. So we will insist on what is balancing also at the end of the lesson. So you first, uh, this equation is the very, very important uh, equation for testing because very often they will ask questions like this. Why, uh, why do we find green coating on the copper when it is exposed to atmosphere? So the co green coating is made of what? What is the substance that forms the green coating? 
So for this, this answer, it is nothing but it is made of copper hydroxide and carb copper carbonate, right? And then when it reacts with oxygen and little carbon dioxide from the moisture and the water, it forms this. So this is what is green coating. A lot of application questions from this. Now we can also, one minute please. Reaction of non-metal with oxygen. When we are going to explain about the reaction, this is about the metal with oxygen. And after that, we should also explain about the, the rusting of iron. Rusting of iron is again a metal when it is exposed to moist air as well as oxygen. It forms iron oxide, Fe2O3, which is iron 3 oxide, ferric oxide. And it forms XH2O. The number of water molecules keeps changing depending upon uh, the atmospheric moisture. So that can be insisted because they don't know much about um, uh, uh, balancing. You can say even you can give this as a word equation. Iron combines with oxygen to form iron 3 oxide. That is enough for their level. And But when you are insisting on, when you are teaching them the balancing, this equation has to be trained. Right, teachers? Shall I proceed? So in all the cases, we are seeing how the metal reacts with oxygen. Generally, rusting and uh, copper, green coating. These two are general applications, but specific thing is the reaction of magnesium with oxygen. Yes, the next one. Reaction of non-metals with oxygen. For this, yeah. How the non-metal reacts with oxygen? We are taking the non-metal sulfur as the example, right? When we are taking sulfur as an example, where uh, characteristic uh, things here are the defl uh, deflagrating spoon, right? We are taking it in one specific spoon called as deflagrating spoon, and then we are burning it and keeping it inside a flask, a specific flask, and then we are closing the lid. So that uh, sulfur dioxide is formed and then we are adding water to it so that it gets mixed with the water to form sulfurous acid. Again, insisting on sulfurous acid is important because all these years, like uh, from the lower classes, they may be familiar with the sulfuric acid, but not sulfurous acid, H2SO3. They are not, they are not very clear about sulfurous acid, but they are very much... Um, for acid rain and all, they have learnt about sulfuric acid in class 7. But sulfuric acid is very much known for them. But sulfurous acid is... So again and again, insist on it. Sulfurous acid. So how do you test whether it is acidic or the basic? By using the blue litmus paper. Introduce a blue litmus paper to it. It turns red. That says it is acidic. So this will help us to have a clear idea about this. Right? Shall I proceed, teachers? Yes, ma'am. One minute. Ah. The reaction between sulfur plus oxygen gives sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide plus water gives sulfurous acid, which is H2SO3. Needs a mention. Very important. See, class 8, class 7, we will just have a start of the chemistry. But class 8, they get a proper platform to land on and learn about the symbols, learn about uh, the elements. They should be able to distinguish between an element and a compound. Element is made of same kind of atoms, whereas a compound is made up of more than one type of atoms that need to be uh, explained. While you are writing this, you can ask many questions. Is uh, sulfur dioxide an element or a compound? Is sulfur an element or oxygen an element? Like that, we can keep um, uh, questioning them and by, by their answers, we will understand how much they have understood and then again, we can go for teaching from the base. So that's what I generally do. This lesson takes little more time than the usual lessons for them to comprehend. I feel so. And now, reaction of metals with water, right? Uh, for this reaction, is one characteristic reaction, putting sodium in water. When we are adding sodium to water, it forms sodium hydroxide. Along with that, hydrogen gas is given out. Here, the characteristic thing is release of hydrogen gas. And how we know it's only a hydrogen gas, collecting the hydrogen gas in a 
test tube. We, uh, we collect the hydrogen gas in a test tube. When you are introducing a burning sphincter, it burns with a pop sound. That says that hydrogen is given out during the reaction. So when sodium reacts with water, it forms sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is released. And that hydrogen gas can be collected in a test tube. Another thing here is, how do you know it is sodium hydroxide? You can test with the litmus paper again. And because of this reason, since sodium reacts with water, we store sodium only in kerosene. Louder? Kerosene, ma'am. Kerosene. kerosene. Thank you. So we store sodium only in kerosene because, and that is an application question. Why do we store sodium in kerosene? Why are we not storing it in water? Why are we not? Uh, keeping it in water. Why, uh, why can't we expose it to atmosphere? All these questions can be asked. The reason is sodium is uh, reactive. It can react with water. We generally store it in the kerosene. So all this uh, will help, uh, help the child to understand better. So the reaction of metals with water. Right? And uh, so we can insist a lot of heat is generated. Therefore, it is stored in... Um, Kerosene, and even we can speak about phosphorus, right? Uh, uh, so this also, when how it uh, catches, uh, uh, how it uh, reacts with the atmosphere and uh, uh, catches fire when it is exposed to air. All this can be explained. And generally, non-metals do not react with oxygen. So that is the second thing. Non-metals. See, this lesson generally speaks about metals reacting and non-metals generally not reacting with uh, water and then some acids and bases. It is a complex reaction. We are not learning. That's all. So that's what is um, uh, explained in the whole of the lesson, I feel. And the reaction of metals with acids. So the first one was reaction of metals with oxygen. Second one, reaction of metals with Water, reaction of metals with acids. And the uh, first one, reaction of non-metals with oxygen also we learned where it is acidic. Reaction of non-metals with water is not much, not there, not, uh, it does not react much. And then reaction of non-metals with acids also does not react much. So we don't learn about these two things, right? So reaction of metals with acids. When a metal reacts with the acid, it produces its metallic salt. And hydrogen gas is all it's also evolved. Uh, generally, non-metals do not react with acid. One point which a child should remember here, very often asked MCQ is, copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Even though copper is a metal and hydrochloric acid is an acid, copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Uh, but it reacts with sulfuric acid, dilute sulfuric acid. This is a statement that the child is only knowledge. Nothing more. Right. When a metal reacts with the acid, it forms a metal salt plus hydrogen. One example can be given as magnesium can react with hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. And aluminium reacts with hydrochloric acid to form hydrochloric acid, uh, aluminium chloride and hydrogen gas. So some examples can be given. And there is one uh, uh, big table in the reader that says about the reaction of the metal with the acids and reaction of non-metals are also given. Generally, non-metals do not react with acids. There may be exceptions, but you insist like this. There may be exceptions. Generally, non-metals do not react with acid. Right? So by giving one or two examples, we can proceed with the next one. Hydrogen gas is involved, evolved during the process. And whenever if hydrogen is evolved during the process, we can check the release of hydrogen by collecting it in the test tube and checking for the pop sound. When you introduce a burning spinter, it burns with a pop sound. So that, that can be used for identifying hydrogen. That can be insisted on. Right. Shall I proceed, teachers? Shall I proceed? The next one. The sodium plus hydrochloric acid gives sodium chloride plus hydrogen, all possible combinations. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid, magnesium chloride, aluminum plus hydrochloric acid, iron plus hydrochloric acid, iron chloride plus hydrogen. You can give some 
examples like this. Now, reaction of non-metal with acid generally does not react. Give an example of a non-metal like sulfur does not react with the acid. So, no reaction happens. Now, reaction of a metal with a base. Now, uh, when we are speaking about the base and acid, the child should be able to relate it to class 7. Hydrogen ions are present, so it is acid. Hydroxide ions are present, so it is a base. So, uh, every time... I insist on that. In class 7, you learned about acids and bases. Hydrogen ions are present, so it is an acid. Base means OH ions are present, so it is a base. Now, when aluminium reacts with sodium hydroxide, it forms one salt and again hydrogen is released. And the salt is not much insisted. This level, sodium aluminate, is not much insisted. Uh, but just tell them it also forms one salt along with that hydrogen is released. Here, the reaction, in this reaction, hydrogen released is only the characteristic thing of this reaction of a metal with the base results in the production of a salt along with hydrogen, release of hydrogen. Whereas, the reaction of a non-metal with the base is a complex reaction which is not going to be studied at this level. What I feel is, in their level, they should be very clear with the reaction of a metal with oxygen and non-metal with oxygen. They should be thorough. And the second one, reaction of metal with water and non-metal with water. These two things we should insist on. Very, very important, the first two things. Next one, acids and bases, reaction of metal with acids, reaction of metal with bases. These two things. Yes, teachers. So that's all about the chemical properties, the four properties, chemical properties we are discussing for class uh, eight children, uh, how the metals will react with oxygen, non-metals will react with oxygen, metals with uh, uh, water, non-metals with water, metals with acids, non-metals with acids and metals with bases and non-metals with bases. This is about the chemical properties. The physical properties is that uh, conduction of heat, electricity, sonorous nature, lustrous nature, all the other things uh, will come into that. That has to be mentioned. And everywhere, generally, please use generally. Because generally only will uh, make them understand there are always exceptions. Yes? Is it clear? Shall I proceed? Yes, so this lesson mainly... We can go for a lot of experiments. This is an experiment-based method. So the methodology that can be used in this lesson is experiments. A lot of experiments can be done during this lesson uh, for teaching the lesson. And during the process, either you can demonstrate or you can ask them to do simple experiments where you give the litmus paper and test. That's all. right? And during the demonstration, ask them to note down as a materials they should be see five or six experiments at the end of the session the child should be able to you know, write on his own an activity insist on making the child writing an activity tell him how to write an activity make him to write an activity on his own a material this is a structure for an activity a materials required and then um, procedure let him try to write a procedure on his own and then observation and inference the second part is displacement reaction. Uh, till now, it's only about uh, metals and non-metals, physical properties and chemical properties. And after this, we are introducing a type of reaction, displacement reaction. Class 10, they'll have different types of reactions. One such reaction is displacement reaction. And for that, we can give an example. When a compound AB reacts with uh, an element C and C will displace one element from the compound and it forms another compound CB and A is sent out. This is what is displacement. Instead of using what I feel is, instead of giving the example of copper sulfate plus iron gives iron sulfate plus copper. Instead of giving that as an example, first explain him like um, with the help of alphabets. He will be able to understand. With my experience, I felt if you are going to explain him with the help of al alphabet, if the child is able to easily catch up, then he can apply this to any type of 
examples and you can understand it better. So when a more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal from its compounds in aqueous solution, we call that as displacement reaction. This actually starts in class 7 in chemical changes. In chemical changes only, this lesson actually starts where you are introducing copper sulfate solution, dropping an iron blade. But there we are not introducing the term displacement reaction. Right? We are giving that as a chemical change. Why? Because there's a change in the color of the liquid. So you can even quote that and you can explain it further that it is a displacement reaction. When a, a more reactive metal displaces. Now, when you say this word more reactive, then the question of what is this more reactive? How it is being compared comes into play. Right? So in that case, we will tell them about the metals are classified according to their reactivity and that is called as reactivity series. This they will learn only in class 10. But there is no harm in saying there is something called reactivity series. Teachers, whatever is applicable for your group of children, please take it. Okay, if I have some 20 boys who will understand what is reactivity series, I should speak. If there are some children who will get confused by using the term reactivity series, then I should stop. I should know. Whatever I teach is not applicable. See, I, I told you even in the previous sessions, if I go for a class A, uh, A section, if I teach about reactivity, reactivity series, the children may be responding well. But the same uh, reactivity series, you go for another section, and where the children are not receiving, then I won't speak about reactivity series there at all. If they get confused, I know these children cannot take it up. So only there I will stop. You should know to limit yourselves depending upon the recipients. Right. So uh, we can speak about the reactivity series. Children who are taking up the Olympiads and all will be much benefited if you tell them about the reactivity series. Now, uh, for example, we are going to give the example of when a zinc uh, reacts with copper sulfate solution, it forms zinc sulfate and copper. From this, what can we conclude? Which is, uh, uh, which is having more reaction, zinc or copper? Which is more reactive? Zinc is more. Because zinc is able to displace copper, so zinc is more reactive than copper. Right? So that conclusion can be made. Even you can give this as a uh, small uh, equation and you can ask the child which uh, metal is displacing which metal. Name the metal which is displacing the other metal. So he will say zinc is displacing copper looking at the uh, re equation. So zinc is more reactive than copper. Right? So the color of this also changes. The copper sulfate which was blue in color turns into colorless solution. And copper gets uh, down and deposited as the red brown color. So this uh, this is an example for a displacement reaction. Now the other way, when copper is allowed to displace zinc sulfate, will there be a displacement reaction? No. Why will there not be a displacement reaction? Because copper is less reactive than zinc. So two things the child has understood. Right? Copper is less reactive than zinc and zinc is more reactive than copper. Am I clear, teachers? Is it clear? So zinc yes, is more yes. reactive than copper and copper is less reactive than zinc. So uh, copper cannot displace zinc, whereas zinc can displace copper. Right? So tell them, uh, uh, you, uh, tell them to imagine zinc as so uh, strong person, something like that. Out, right and even with the help of some children you can enact this uh, two boys holding their hands call them as copper sulfate a and the copper one person and the person sulfate bring another boy closer to him right now he is going he let him be the zinc and now he goes and joins with them and displaces the copper out right like that also you can uh, make them enact so they won't forget it at all displacement reaction they'll happily enjoy doing that also and this activity is given in our reader in our textbook a very important activity where uh, uh, five beakers are taken 
and uh, wherein we are going to take uh, copper sulfate and then two beakers and then zinc sulfate and then iron sulfate and another one again zinc sulfate and depending upon the reactivity we are going to add the first one zinc granule second iron nail and then the copper turnings and then again copper turnings and iron nail and from that from the whole experiment the very interesting and uh, nice experiment the first two uh, beakers alone the child uh, reaction will happen the last three doesn't show any reaction that says that zinc is more reactive than ferrum which is iron which is more reactive than cuprum which is copper as you speak about copper cu and all you can tell them there's a latin name called cuprum for copper there's an iron uh, latin name for iron is ferrum all these things are because this makes the classroom more interesting also the latin names if we introduce so clear teachers so this reactivity uh, can be explained and finally it comes to the uses of metals and non metals when it comes to the uses of metals Uh, all the metals are like uh, gold silver are used in jewelry and the platinum also used for jewelry aluminium iron utensils construction of buildings they will list down a lot right soft metals like sodium what are their uses and calcium all these can be listed down this is only the application they know every day we are using different metals for various purposes so this easily they will list down uses of non metals right and um, uh, sulfur the use of sulfur oxygen for breathing purposes nitrogen for making fertilizers right the hydrogen is used for making ammonia welding purposes and fuel in rockets and chlorine for um, chlorination killing the it's one a chlorination is a process that they'll be learning in purification of water physical uh, method of purifying water addition of chlorine tablets so we can insist that an iodine is used as a tincture iodine in antiseptic all this need to be mentioned all this need to be mentioned and as you are speaking about the elements give them the uh, symbol for the elements sulfur s oxygen o nitrogen n hydrogen h chlorine cl iodine i so you keep writing with the symbols so that class 9 it will be like a child's play for them they will know so many elements and their symbols so how much of interest that we inculcate that gets reflected in them i feel so but there are some children as sir said it's very very difficult to teach them it's not an easy job it's very very difficult try to connect with them first my advice is try to connect with them as you connect with them automatically things will fall in its place twice or thrice speak with them uh, use some um, uh, very uh, a catchy words to attract the child let him come to you and speak let him share his problem and let him or her share his problem and slowly you will be able to catch hold of his problems and try to uh, find out and rectify his problems i feel so yes so this is about the uses of non metals right and finally you speak about the metalloids what are metalloids there is one line mentioned see if you are going to show what is a periodic table and this side uh, you can show where the metals are arranged where the non metals are arranged in between these two the metalloids with the so periodic table you just tell and see they will have a lot of interest to see what it is all the elements are there all these things some words at least they will see what it is i told you know five elements a day and the symbol you learn okay so when you come back you will know 118 elements after the holidays with their symbols and like that also some children will have the habit of learning and then you tell them about between the characteristics of metals and non metals there are certain substances they are given a position in the periodic table between metals and non metals they are called as metalloids they show the characteristics of both the metals and non metals that need to be mentioned with this we include about this and you can uh, list them some examples for metalloids so that can be some mcq or olympia question whatever they want they can and handle it let us try to find out if metallic oxides are acidic or basic in nature let us do a small experiment to see this for this we need magnesium wire which is a metal water 
red and blue litmus paper, a petri dish, dropper, spirit lamp, matchbox, and a pair of tongs. Light the spirit lamp first. Now hold the magnesium wire with the tongs and bring the ribbon to the flame. Observe that the magnesium burns with a bright white light. Is it audible? Is it audible, Mala, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma As it burns, an ash like powdery substance is formed. This is magnesium oxide. Collect the powder in a petri dish and dissolve it in water. Yes, Take a drop of this solution and place it on the red and blue litmus papers. Observe the change in the color of the litmus papers. We observe that red litmus turns blue while blue litmus remains the same. What does this indicate? The oxide of magnesium is basic in nature. From this, we can infer that the oxides of metals are basic in nature. When metal oxides are dissolved in water, the metal ions react with water and form hydroxide ions, which makes the solution basic. Why don't you collect some rust or some Epsom salt and try to do this experiment? There is some app. There is an app called Tickling. Hope some of you are familiar with that. Tickling. You know that app, teachers? Tickling. T-I-C-K-L-I-N-K. How are you today? Yes. So today I'm going to demonstrate another chemical reaction. This tinkering app is actually very much useful for teachers. Just try it. It's also uh, done with the DAV teachers. Also DAV supported by DAV. Uh, you can also open that and it will be like uh, giving everything as periods. In periods, uh, uh, first period in each lesson, you have to log in. And if needed, I will share and I will show you. This is a very useful app for you. This is only the ticking app. You can log in. You can fix up. There is one login here. You can log in using your password and ID. Uh, that they'll, you can give your uh, mobile number. And then you sign in with your credentials. Then it will be useful. Okay. So like this, in this, if you go in, you can, uh, you will get a lot of information for uh, science, English and maths. Science uh, for 6, 7, 8, science is well, uh, nicely uh, given. One minute. You're able to see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So this is only 6 standard. I have gone for 6, 7, 8 science. Six standard food, where does it come from? First period, what should be done? Second period, what should be done? You have an activity assessment, everything is there for six standard. If I want to go for seven standard, all the lessons that are there in NCRT, any lesson you want, you can take help. It is one open free app only. For eight standard also, you will have, uh, it is divided according to the periods and according to the content. I think this will be uh, very uh, useful for you. So I thought I will share with you. I want to see, for example, I'm going for uh, cell structure and function, reproduction in animals. And then I have this is divided into these many periods. I want the fourth period from here. So I'm going with your uh, uh, with my fourth period. So opening is uh, how are babies made? What is, where does the life begin? And uh, process of fertilization, everything is given. What is the activity I'm going to take for this? What is the assessment I'm going to have? Everything is given. That period, what would I do? So I can give this as an assessment. Through WhatsApp also, I can share this. So I can share on WhatsApp, whatever activity is there with your students. So this will be a very useful thing. So that's what uh, I thought I would share with you. 